Welcome to another video about the Algarve. This time I want to be focusing on Sao Braj del Portel, which has come up. Um, it's not just because I live there, but it's come up in quite a few surveys and recommendations of people moving to Portugal. And the main reason I love living near Sao Braj del Portel is because you're living in the country. And that's what country life in the Algarve is all about. I mean, just look at these beautiful views from where we are, just over, over, you know, winter's dawn. And it's absolutely amazing. All you hear is birds, and it's just this, you know, go for walks right around your house. And it's just, it's fantastic living in the country. I, I personally, I love it. So let me give you a quick overview of Salbra. So this is the location. You see it's about 25 minutes north of Faro by road. And this is the A22 highway, which stretches right close to Sao Braj, so it's easy access to get in. Now, when you go into this, the town itself, you can see the conveniences. Over here, we have three major shopping centers, or not shopping centers, but shops. So this one is Lidl in the southwest. A little bit further north of that is Bingo Dos. And then right over on the eastern side, there's Intermarché. So you can get all you need over there. If you want to get a, if you want to go to a continent supermarket, that's just 10 minutes west down the road in Lule. Now, if you look around, there's two pharmacies or chemists. There's one over here and another one in the main square. And you'll see us, we'll drive by the, the main square now when I take my daughter to school. Just so you can get your bearings, we're looking south now down towards Faro, looking down the main street of Salbrage, and you can see here is where the main square is and the ph pharmacy just off there and all cafes dotted around the main square. And as you look further down, you can see towards Faro through that gap in the hills down there. So it's not that far from Faro, uh, and this sort of overview, drone overview, gives you a nice overview of Sao Braj. So let's take you on a drive through Sao Braj um, with my daughter as I take her to school quickly. Good morning. So in order to prove to you how normal life can be in the Algarve, I need to show you exactly what we do here on a regular basis in the middle of winter. So, wow, this is winter. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> um, so right now I'm just taking my daughter to school and uh, it's eight o'clock and uh, it's not that cold you know I think people in the UK would be like this is t-shirt weather but anyway just to give you an idea of what life's like in Sao Braj del Portel hello hello you ready to go to school yep all right well I can't do this while we're driving so maybe you can help us out there sure maybe just put on my seatbelt if that's all right with you thank you so as we're entering into Sao Braj yes you see the old town on the right hand side over here and then you just carry on straight through here. This is the main square we're going to come up on. And in the main square are a whole bunch of little cafes. And according to my gorgeous wife, on the left hand side is the best Portuguese stew ever. <laughs> Although I don't like it because they're still smoking there. So it's a bit skanky. But on the right hand side here, can you want to pan over there to the, to the, to the right hand side? Yeah. The, this square is like filled with people having coffees and everything like that. You're going to school, is he? Yes. Okay. Sometimes we have to go to RTL. And then if you come up this road, this is the EN2, which is the longest road in the whole of Portugal. This road right here carries on for 700 and odd kilometers all the way up into the north in a place called Shabs. And uh, you gotta watch out for these dudes driving. So yeah, we're going in the back streets of, of Sao Braj, which is not a massive town. There's only about 11,000 people in this concilium. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many people in the town, but it's uh, in the top there. Can you see in the top? I'm not sure if you can see in the top. Not exactly. You can tell that there's something there, but it's okay. very overexposed. Uh, okay. Maybe there you go. You can kind of see it, guys. Well, that is a posada, or used to be a posada. Posada, there. Posada. Thanks, my love. Pleasure. That thing over there. The That's how I can thing pronounce things so beautifully, is because I've got you as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to? you still videoing? Yeah, and my school bell just rang. Oh dear. So. so we're a little bit late, that's not good. So, oh, it's alright. Well, I have I a like 10 to minute tolerance in the morning. No, but we shouldn't rely on the tolerance. Anyway, so we just want to like get the uh. video going as we come into the school. That would be great. It is going. It's we been going always... for 2 minutes and 56 seconds. Brilliant. We can always delete this audio if we have to. So it's kind of fun though. Is Stoy a part of Sombraj or not? Um, no. Stoy is a part of Faro. Sabraj is its own concern. Yeah. And Stoy is a part of Faro. Okay. Okay, so here's a look, there's a skate park, man. Root! God, I don't know. <laughs> Old tractor in the road. So 
that's the school, I guess. So that is the school. That's Isabella's school. It's the main government school here called Bernardo Passos, and it caters for kids from grade 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Around Sao Brazil, there's, there's a high school as well that caters to 10, 11, and 12. And there are five primary schools which cater for grades 1, 2, 3, and 4. There are also three preschools around two rural ones and one urban one around the area. The closest international schools are in Lule, Almansil, and Quinta del Lago. Also, there's tons of restaurants around all different parts. Like, for example, there's an Indian restaurant called the Taste of Punjab. Classic Portuguese chicken at Luis de Frango, just a little bit up the road from that. There's a nice smart restaurant called Esconderijo. Um, and there's a lots, lots of other restaurants around and little coffee shops. There's the best hamburgeria, which I love the most. In, uh, and also some really nice country-style restaurants, especially Sabor de Campo is, is good. Wouldn't call it a super beautiful town, but there's some striking little parts. Really are. Yeah, yeah Saubraj is not a stunning town. It really isn't visually stimulating. But there's a the major charm to me is in the rural, rough rural areas and the hills surrounding it. But if you do look around Saubraj, you'll realize that it has a really powerful history. And, um, and I think it was in the 1800s, it was, really became a center of cork production around the world because obviously Portugal was the premier cork producer in the world and this Sabraj del Porto was one of the centers or was the center of cork production in the whole of Portugal and if you look closely around Sabraj between the ruins and the old houses you'll see some magnificent buildings and just walking here through the old town you can see as I pan up into this building here I mean look at it sort of Moorish almost it's it's quite stunning and there are little pockets and then they then they sort of run-down ruins in between with beautiful little orange trees here and there so there are some delights this is a cork monument and the nice thing about portugal is that every single roundabout seems to be a homage to something so you can always have fun trying to figure out what the next roundabout is going to be so in summing up uh Salbraj is a great place i think um for me personally i think the rural area around it is much better but it's a lovely little village to get to know as well there's some nice restaurants good facilities inside there Good conveniences like a beautiful market that I haven't actually mentioned in the middle of Sabraj. It's got two pharmacies, you know, three major shopping, um, three major grocery shops, and tons of other little shops in and out. So it's a it's a lovely little town that serves the surrounding areas, and, and the hills around are stunning. They've got beautiful views, great for hiking, great for cycling. Um, I do it all the time. Love cycling. And uh, yeah, there's, it's, a, it's a nice place to live. And I think it's away from tourism. It's safe. Um, you hardly get any tourism up there. You know, in the middle of August, when then the whole of the country tips over, you'll be fine in Sao Brage and you'll be away from the tourists. There's also quite a lot of nice expat community. There's a Friends of the Museum. There's also people all hang around to watch rugby games together, Scottish rugby games. and Not just Scottish, but there's a large Scottish contingent here. And a lot of uh, foreigners live in the hills like I do. Um, around Sabraj. And if you dig deep, you'll be able to find and connect with them and have a, a great expat community. And there's quite a few lovely little bars and restaurants outside Sabraj that everyone congregates in. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry, I'm just making a, a braai here, a barbecue, because <laughs> we love to do that. But I hope you enjoyed that little tour of Sabraj. It's, it's an amazing place to live and it's becoming very popular with American expats. So um, probably because it's, you know, it's a country-fired area, and it's very rural and there's lots and lots of opportunities and lots of houses around here to buy. And um, with Lule and Salbraj really close by, you've got all the shopping centers you need. You've got tons of schools. You've got all, you know, right close to the A22, which is the highway that stretches all the way across the Algarve. Remember my last video? And um, yeah, it's, it's a good spot to, to live and it's country. And the nice thing is that during the summer, the tourists don't bug you. Uh, and look, sure, if you're on Saturday morning in Lule at the market, well, then they'll bother you, but um, it's not like down in Albufeira or Villamora where it's just mass tourism in August, just heaving people. So, yeah, it's a good spot to be. I love it up here, I really do. The only hassle, I mean, there are a couple of downsides, is that it takes a little while to get to the beach. I mean, it takes me about 25 minutes to drive to the beach. And um, But you know what? It's nice because the interesting thing is 
we were up here in Sabraj and then if you go to Tavira, it's 25 minutes. Um, and it's almost like a sort of semicircle. So if you go down to Faro, it's about 25 minutes. And if you go to Villa Mora, it's 25 minutes. So you've got this range of beaches that you can have within 25 minutes, which is quite cool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what town you'd like to see next. Adios. Holgarvaddicts.com